B12 deficiency is serious and can cause devastating, even permanent neurological injury. In this video, I'll review the absorption of B12, common causes of B12 deficiency, and neurological manifestations of B12 deficiency, including optic neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, subacute combined degeneration, and dementia, and talk about my own clinical experiences. We begin with the absorption of B12, the importance of which will become apparent momentarily. B12 is abundant in animal products, meat, milk, cheese, and eggs. You eat it, it travels through the esophagus into the stomach. It then binds a protein intrinsic factor, which is created by parietal cells, cells in the stomach lining. This complex then travels through the small intestine, greatly truncated in this diagram, all the way to the ileum, the end of the small intestine right before the colon. It, it binds the epithelial cell intrinsic factor receptor, and B12 is absorbed into the portal vein and spread throughout the body. Now we look at the common causes of B12 deficiency. One important cause that's commonly associated with neurological disease is pernicious anemia. This is an autoimmune disease that can cause a very severe B12 deficiency where the body generates antibodies against intrinsic factor protein and parietal cells. And you can see those antibodies could attack the parietal cells and this protein intrinsic factor blocking the absorption. Crohn's disease, a form of inflammatory bowel disease that can specifically affect the terminal ileum right where B12 is absorbed. Celiac disease associated with gluten intolerance can cause intestinal inflammation if severe and untreated and cause multiple vitamin deficiencies, including B12 deficiencies. Various gastrointestinal surgeries like bariatric surgery, gastric bypass for weight loss can cause B12 deficiency over time. Usually individuals with these surgeries are recommended to take supplements. A fish tapeworm in some areas of the world, not really in the United States, Debo Cephalus lattice, excuse the pronunciation, is known to be associated with B12 deficiency, and various other stomach conditions like gastritis, if severe and prolonged inflammation of the stomach, even H. pylori infection if untreated for a prolonged period of time. Some medications like acid blockers and metformin used to treat diabetes can interfere with B12 absorption, though usually on their own they would not cause a severe deficiency. Nitrous oxide, laughing gas, causes the rapid metabolism of B12 and can cause a relatively rapid onset of deficiency. This is usually not in the setting of industrial exposure. It's usually in the setting of abusing the drug. For instance, I had a patient who was getting canisters used for cars as a nitro boost, and she was inhaling them, and she developed a spinal cord disease, subacute combined degeneration from abusing nitrous oxide. She was treated with cessation of the behavior and B12 supplementation. She did get a lot better over time though she did have some amount of neurological disability from it. It's been reported in dentists or other people who work in a dental office just because they have access to laughing gas. And this would not be with a mild exposure used for normal dental work. It's really with abuse and prolonged exposure a high amount over time. Vegans can get B12 deficiency, although the gastrointestinal tract is highly efficient at preserving B12 and the body has stores of B12. So a vegan with a normal gastrointestinal tract would not become seriously deficient for many years or even decades. I do have one vegan patient who is a strictly ethical vegan, didn't know anything about nutrition, did not take a supplement, who developed peripheral neuropathy from veganism over many years and decades. I gave her a B12 supplement and I never saw her again. But in general, all of my patients except for her who developed B12 deficiency are omnivores. So it's somewhat of a myth that vegans are at higher risk. It's really things more like pernicious anemia or these surgeries or other gastrointestinal conditions that are more commonly associated with severe B12 deficiency because most vegans are well-educated and they know they're supposed to supplement with B12. This diagram explains why B12 deficiency is toxic to the nervous system. We know that B12 is a cofactor in various enzymes, including methionine synthase, which metabolizes homocysteine to methionine. Homocysteine, when elevated, is associated with a hypercoagulable state, in other words, an increased tendency towards clotting. It's also a cofactor in methylmalonyl-CoA reductase, which metabolizes methylmalonic acid to succinyl-CoA. Methylmalonic acid, or MMA, causes a demyelination. It causes damage to the myelin, the fatty sheath of nerve fibers. When testing for B12 deficiency, we don't just test vitamin B12 levels. We also test folate because these two deficiencies are associated with each other 
each other, and both can cause megaloblastic anemia, or anemia, low blood cell mass associated with large red blood cells. We also check a complete blood count to look for anemia, and the size of the red blood cells measured by MCV, or mean corpuscular volume. We check the metabolites, methylmalonic acid, and homocysteine to see how severe it is, and the blood test for pernicious anemia, anti-intrinsic factor antibody, and anti-parietal cell antibody. I will briefly show some non-neurological manifestations of B12 deficiency. This is a blood smear of someone with megaloblastic anemia showing large irregular red blood cells. It can also cause some superficial changes like a smooth tongue and darkening of the skin pigment, which reversed in this 59-year-old man after B12 supplementation. You can see in the bottom two pictures. If you do blood tests for vitamin B12, usually a normal level is reported as anything above 300 picograms per milliliter. This is translated into picomoles per liter, depending on where you are in the world. And it may be reported as borderline if it's between 200 and 300. However, I've seen people with severe B12 deficiency causing neurological disease at relatively high levels, like right around 200. And it's even been reported in the literature that it could occur with normal levels of B12, but elevated methylmalonic acid. So me personally, I would often recommend supplementation to anyone with a level below 400 just in case because B12 supplements are extremely benign, but talk to your own provider. I'm next going to move into neurological manifestations of B12 deficiency, but first a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Broccoli, a delicious superfood, low in calorie density, high in insoluble fiber, an excellent source of calcium, though ironically deficient in B12. Consume broccoli regularly to maintain excellent endothelial health and good blood flow to your kidneys, heart, and brain to age 100 and beyond. These are the neurological diseases associated with B12 deficiency. We can see peripheral neuropathy damage to the peripheral nerves. It's length dependent, so the longest nerves are affected most, so it tends to affect the fingers and the hands and can cause numbness and pain or even weakness if severe. Subacute combined degeneration is a disease of the spinal cord. It's subacute, meaning it comes on slowly over days or weeks. It's combined, meaning affects both the posterior and back of the spinal cord and lateral or sides of the spinal cord. So it can cause both numbness and weakness. Historically, people thought subacute combined degeneration was caused by Tabes dorsalis or neurosyphilis, neurological manifestations of the sexually transmitted infection syphilis, but it's not. It's caused by B12 deficiency and sometimes other causes as well. Optic neuropathy, damage to the optic nerve, and visual impairment, dementia or other cognitive symptoms, psychosis, and other psychiatric features. Also, B12 deficiency, like iron deficiency, is associated with restless leg syndrome. This is a retinal photo of a 69-year-old with optic neuropathy. You can see the optic disc, which is the optic nerve, looks pale. It should have a little pinkish tint to it. This was actually found on a routine exam of someone with visual loss. This is a younger person, a 34-year-old with B12 deficiency. Here you can see the retinal photo looks a little bit different. It's very swollen or edematous. And there's also this cluster of blood vessels known as telangiectasias, though they improved after supplementation. Now I'll show some examples of subacute combined degeneration, the spinal cord disease that's caused by B12 deficiency. You can get a very similar syndrome with copper deficiency. Here you're looking at T2 sagittal images of the MRI. So the brain is up here. These are the bones, the vertebrae. These are the discs in between. And the spinal cord should look dark, but you can see this white lesion, very extensive. This is the subacute combined degeneration. And it's usually in the cervical spine, though if it's severe, it can extend into the medulla or go down into the thoracic spine. This is a cross-sectional image. Now we're looking at slices like this through the thoracic spine. So you can see the vertebra, the bone here. This is the spinous process you can touch in your back. These are the muscles. And the spinal cord should be dark, but you can see all these white changes. The white around is the normal cerebral spinal fluid. This is another example now in the cervical spine, also axial slices. Again, the spinal cord should look dark, and you can see this white change. It involves both the posterior, the back of the spine, 
involved in sensation, fine touch, vibration sense, but also the side or lateral part of the spinal cord, which contains the lateral spinal thalamic tract containing the motor fibers. This is one last example showing both sagittal and axial slices, and you can see these very symmetrical lesions here, and this one doesn't extend quite as far. So there's quite a bit of a variability of how it can look on MRI scans, so you definitely have to do the blood tests. This is a sural nerve biopsy in someone with B12 deficiency due to nitrous oxide use. The sural nerve is in the back of the leg. It has no motor fibers. That's why it can be biopsied relatively safely. People can get a patch of numbness. And you can see this abnormal ovoid myelination. This is abnormal remyelination after the injury. I will now show a series of MRI scans of the brain in people with B12 deficiency. This image on the right is someone who has vascular dementia with B12 deficiency, a control MRI scan on the left. You can see these subcortical white matter lesions and involvement of the external capsule and flare suppression is typical of microinfarcts. Now, as I said, B12 deficiency can cause elevation of homocysteine and increase the risk of various vascular diseases, though this MRI would be indistinguishable of someone with dementia related to uncontrolled hypertension or other vascular risk factors. This is a 52-year-old vegetarian male who also had pernicious anemia with antiparietal and anti-intrinsic factor antibodies. So I presume the pernicious anemia was the main cause of this disorder, although vegetarians may have lower levels of B12 if they don't take supplements, even though they do consume some B12 in the diet. He developed progressive cognitive and also gait decline because he also had subacute combined degeneration. And you can see these extensive subcortical white matter lesions. Note some of these periventricular lesions could be mistaken for multiple sclerosis. Of course, these more diffuse lesions are very atypical for multiple sclerosis. However, he was given a supplement and dramatically improved, and you can see his MRI looks much better. This is 18 months later. Also, his mini mental status exam score, a cognitive test, improved from 7 out of 30, which is very severe cognitive impairment, to 29 out of 30, normal, just with B12 supplementation. This is a young woman with behavior change and generalized weakness found to have severe B12 deficiency. You can see her MRI shows extensive symmetrical subcortical white matter lesions with some involvement of the corpus callosum with extension into the temporal lobe. This could easily be confused for autoimmune encephalitis or even a disease called catacil. This is a 61-year-old man with pernicious anemia. The image on the left is a cross-section of the spinal cord, and you can see features typical of subacute combined degeneration. But in this MRI of the brain, you can also see this lesion. This is known as a cytotoxic lesion of the splenium of the corpus callosum, and it's very nonspecific. It can be seen with meningitis, thiamine deficiency, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, even low sodium levels, so very unusual finding there. This is a 45-year-old woman with cognitive impairment found to have B12 deficiency and these unusual, patchy, very nonspecific lesions. This is a 56-year-old woman with cognitive changes and also a physical decline who had pernicious anemia with anti-intrinsic factor antibodies. The image on the right is a cross-section through the spinal cord. You can see this T2 bright lesion in the posterior cord consistent with subacute combined degeneration. The image on the left is an MRI of the brain, but now we're looking at sagittal images. So this is the corpus callosum, and you can see this extensive, patchy, unusual lesion, which could easily be misconstrued as indicative of another neurological disease like Marchiafavi, Bignami syndrome, or even Susak's disease. So you can see these MRI findings in B12 deficiency are highly variable, so when in doubt, it's usually a good idea to check B12 just in case. This next MRI is of a nine-month-old child. You can see the initial MRI scan on top of a child with developmental regression shows severe brain atrophy, shrinkage of the brain. You can see the gyri are very thin, and there's all this extra cerebrospinal fluid. It turns out that breast milk normally contains B12. Formula is supplemented with B12. However, the mother had pernicious anemia, but she was asymptomatic. However, However, the child was given B12 supplementation and dramatically improved, and in fact, an MRI done 10 months later, the images on the bottom show dramatic reversal of brain atrophy. This is a 24-year-old vegan man from Sri Lanka who developed
developed a venous stroke, dural venous thrombosis, and had elevated levels of homocysteine, hyperhomocysteinemia. What you're looking at on this MRI scan is T2 brightness in various areas in the brainstem around the third ventricle and cerebral hemispheres consistent with a venous infarct, poor venous drainage causing a stroke, and this could be associated with devastating neurological injury. Again, it's perfectly safe to be vegan. In fact, vegans have a longer life expectancy and lower risk of certain diseases, but you got to take a B12 supplement. I should also give credit to these three scientists who won the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1934 for discoveries related to the treatment of pernicious anemia with liver, very high doses of liver, though the active ingredient of liver, B12, was not discovered until 1948. They are George Whipple, George Minot, and William Perry Murphy. I always tell my patients with pernicious anemia that many people with pernicious anemia prior to this discovery actually used to die. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below and let me know if you have suggestions for future videos.